Hey folks, welcome back to Midwest Long Range. Today, we're going to get into a project I have worked so long to bring to you guys. I have wanted to do this since I first heard about NRL Hunter. So, stick with me. We're going to go over everything we got here. All right, guys, let's get into what this build consists of. I started with one of my Curtis Axiom actions. I literally just went and grabbed one of my other guns, tore it apart to build this gun with. But I really think this is a solid action to begin with. Now, I did make a couple changes to it. I opted to order the alloy scope base and bolt knob. It helped me shave about four ounces off of this action. Now, for the stock, we went to Manners Composite Stocks. This is the LRH from those guys. This thing is amazing. I absolutely love it. It is so lightweight. And it comes with a Arca section back here for tripod use. It comes with a pick front rail for mounting your bipod to. I didn't have any Picatinny bipods on hand. So I went ahead and just mounted this short piece of Arca I had laying around. I'm actually thinking about going back to the pick and going with a double pull sky pod but i don't have that here with me today for the barrel on this i reached out to the guys over at oregon mountain rifle company this is one of their carbon fiber wrap in-house barrels this thing is absolutely awesome a very good friend of mine went ahead and spun this barrel up for me you know who you are thank you so much sir i really appreciate it now with all that being said i've also got the maven rs4 you guys have seen me use this optic in other videos but this is the build that that scope was intended for i always wanted to run it on my nrl hunter build it is not the most lightweight scope that there is out there but i've built the rest of the rig around it in order to keep the weight down so that i could run the optic i chose now that optic is sitting in a set of hawkins ultralight tactical rings with a side bubble and again from hawkins i went with their bottom metal on this setup this is their hunter setup with their flush mount mag this thing is awesome if you get a chance to check those guys out by all means everything i've ever had from hawkins is top tier okay guys but this whole build is just really what i wanted you know it's got my my go-to Timony hit trigger. Um, and again, it's got the MDT ground pod out front, which I did originally get for this build. I went ahead and I chambered this in 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, a lot of you guys are out there going, well, he, you're the 25 Creedmoor, dude. What did, why? And yeah, I could have made Power Factor with a 25 Creed. Matter of fact, I had originally planned to do so. In order to hit power factor for NRL Hunter, I needed to run about 2,820 feet per second. That would have put me right at the line. So I was going to shoot for about 2,850 to 2,900. Very doable with a 135 grain burger hybrid. But reality set in for me. I'm so busy between work and YouTube and shooting 22 matches and center fire matches. I'm probably not going to be able to shoot as many matches as I would like to with this rifle. So, with that being said, I kind of hit the NRL Hunter easy button, which is 6.5 Creedmoor. I can run factory box ammo if I want to, and then I don't even have to worry about hitting power factor. Or, I can just hand load my own 140s or 130s, and I'm going to hit it with no problem whatsoever. But for what NRL Hunter is, the 6.5 Creedmoor is plenty. Most of those matches, from my understanding, go to about 800-ish yards. There's probably some 1,000-yard stages in there. But it's not something you're going to spend all day doing. And today, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start breaking this rig in. I've got my paperwork over here from OMR on barrel break-in procedure. We're going to go ahead we're going to get started on this. Because later in the series on this rifle, we're going to take it out to Gadsden Shooting Center we're going to stretch the legs on this old girl. It only comes in at about 11 pounds with the bipod and the optic. So let's see just what kind of recoil management this old 22 guy can still handle. 
All right, so the guys over at OMR were kind enough to send me the break-in procedure for their barrel, what they recommend. It's pretty standard stuff based on what I, other setups, other break-in procedures I've seen in the industry. Um, we're going to shoot one round and clean for the first five rounds. There's our first round, and time to clean. Then we're going to shoot three rounds and clean for the next 15 rounds. And then we'll shoot five rounds clean. And then we're going to shoot a fowler round, one round. And then we'll shoot a three-shot group for accuracy. Now he does put a note on here. Allow the barrel to cool to ambient temperature before shooting each series of break-in rounds. This is to un avoid unnecessary throat erosion. That's something a lot of people really need to pay attention to. Hot lapping these barrels, these center fire barrels, you can really damage them. But uh, if you follow the procedure, you know, you can, uh, you'll break the barrel in just fine. Now at this point, we are 20 rounds, I believe. Yeah, 20 rounds into our break-in. So we've done all of our one shot then cleans. So there were five rounds of that. And then there were five strings of three shots with cleaning in between each one and letting the barrel cool back down to ambient temperature over time. We're going to go ahead and film this five shot string. Keep in mind, this is not for accuracy. This is still part of the break in process, but it's the first time we get to put more than three rounds to it. So I'm kind of interested to see if there's much walking or anything like that. And this is just some 130 grain Remington Sirocco stuff I had piled back in the back of my safe. So this is just some burner ammo. I'm not really testing this for the sake of testing it. It just it's what I had to use up that I felt like sparing. So keep that in mind. Um, part of it when we get into this stage of the process. That's our last uh, string of the break-in. Now we got a we got to clean it one more time, run a fowler through it, and shoot three shots for accuracy. Um, I'm not so sure that uh, this is going to be the ammo to uh, get any kind of accuracy off of. Let's start with this Fiocchi 142 grain of the brand new box. I'm not sure what I bought it for. But uh, I've got it, so let's try it. Well, certainly better than uh, the other stuff we had been given the old college try. So a whole lot better. We're we're headed in a in a better direction. So I think that's probably sub MOA slightly, um, which you know we could remedy this whole situation and do some hand loads, but. Give the barrel a little bit to cool off and uh, we'll try some of these Winchesters. So 
So that's probably right in there about an inch -ish, uh, inch ish, if I had to guess. Uh, the Fiocchi is probably a little tighter than that, but we're showing promise. We're getting there. Got to give me a minute, folks, on this. I mean, I literally just broke the barrel in today. I need to run down to the gun store, and I need to pick up some more ammo. And who knows, I may even try to develop a load for it. My intention is to shoot factory ammo out of this gun, at least for the moment. All right, folks, so I decided not to end the video on shooting the ammunition that I had. You know, we've already shot the Winchester and the Fiocchi. I went ahead, I ran down and saw my good buddy Phil at Midwest Gun and Pawn, and he had some Hornady Match 6.5 Creedmoor in 140 grain sitting on the shelf. One Fowler and uh, three shots loaded up. Let's uh, go ahead and take a few shots at the 95 yard target and see how this does. Strung out just a little bit. Um, the first three were looking really good, and then I'm not so sure that I didn't toss one there myself. There you go, not a bad little group. I got two touching and, and one just a little outside, but keep in mind this is factory ammunition. Uh, I'm gonna go down and check those with the Ballistic X app. Uh, I did check the Fiocchi. What I was calling uh, three quarter ended up being about 0.8. So uh, that looks like it's probably gonna be pretty close to that in all honesty, but uh, we're gonna go down and get a picture and check it out. So hang on and we'll be right back. All right, folks, so that concludes our barrel break-in on the new NRL Hunter lightweight build. Now, the way this rifle's set right now, it is set up to compete in open lightweight class. Uh, like I said, I'm probably going to make a change out front on the bipod, staying with MDT, but going to the double pull sky more than likely. But for now... This setup comes in right at about 11 pounds. So I've got a pound to spare, even with this heavy monster optic. But I went and did everything very wisely everywhere else. There's also some places I could continue to cut weight. I could have went with like the Curtis Hybrid action, which uh, you know already has like the plugs milled out of it and what have you for lighter weight. Um, I did get alloy bolt knob and the alloy scope rail for that action so i did shave four ish ounces off of there but we're shooting sub moa right now on a brand new build that's got less than 100 rounds on it this is uh that's pretty good i'm pretty happy with that considering this this entire thing right here this weighs 11 pounds controlling the recoil and managing an 11 pound rifle whole different ball game than what we're used to so take that into consideration could be a little of me and uh we're still shooting factory ammo but guys i really appreciate you coming out and checking out this build and again i cannot thank the companies that took part in this enough from maven optics oregon mountain rifle company manners composite stocks 
Hawkins Precision, MDT, of course, like in all of my builds, the old faithful Timony triggers. I couldn't do it without those guys. And uh, I wanted to bring this to you all. NRL Hunter is becoming such a cool thing. Stay tuned in to the Midwest Long Range Rimfire Series Facebook group because there are groups of guys in central Missouri and northern Missouri that are going to be putting on NRL style Hunter Rimfire matches like Kurt Burkhead up at Muddy Creek in northern Missouri up in Coffee up north of uh, Kansas City a little ways. Team matches, these things are awesome guys. He's gonna be doing one on January 21st. I hope I get this video out, video out before that happens. So if you guys wanna come out and shoot NRL Hunter style, but with a rim fire, come up there and see us on the 21st. I'll be up there and some of the other guys that shoot with me will be also. Um, lots of cool things coming in the new year. And I appreciate you all taking part with me on this journey. You've helped me grow the channel. You've helped me just get into stuff I normally wouldn't have messed with, guys. Um, I really appreciate it. And thank you all for watching. Stay safe. Keep shooting. Come, come back and see me next time right here at Midwest Long Range.